Well, welcome, everybody. My name is Dennis McNamara. I'm from the Humanitarian Dialogue Center in Geneva. And I'm going to try and moderate uh, this discussion. We're pleased to see all of you. I should tell you, as you probably know also, that there's an online audience as well. Uh, and we'll take some questions from them in the Q&A session. Um, my notes say that you, when you speak, you should speak into the microphone, say who you are, and say where you are from. So if you can please do that. I would also add, um, please try and raise questions rather than make statements. Or if you make a statement, make it brief. <laughs> because else we... If you ask a question, ask an easy question. Easy <laughs> questions to Brian, <laughs> hard ones to Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <coughs> um, I'm going to introduce the speakers. You know the topic, getting where needed, how to get humanitarian access into difficult, complex, dangerous situations without compromising and breaking the rules and getting in trouble and not delivering things properly. It's about humanitarian access in conflict <coughs> and conflict-related situations. And I'm very happy to be invited to come because it's something that's bothered me for a long time recently. After decades in the UN business, <coughs> I think we've got more humanitarian no-go areas today globally than I've seen in, in a long time, but we'll come back to that. I think it's a major challenge and it's probably something that the international system has yet to fully and, and uh, appropriately deal with. But I should first introduce our panel on my right, so of course, Sarah Panatiliana, who is the head of the Humanitarian Policy Group, our host, thank you very much, Sarah, known to all of you, I'm sure, who has a long history in this business, quite a, a well-known name in the humanitarian world, of course, especially on Sudan and South Sudan and other places, and we're delighted that she could uh, join us here. On my left, Brian Tisdall is the head of the Division of Multilateral Organizations, Policy and Humanitarian Action, goodness. <laughs> at ICRC, Brian, uh, formerly with Gavi Alliance and was formerly head of the External Resources Division of ICRC from Geneva. And on the right, I guess, Marc Dubois doesn't need much introduction. He is the Executive Director of Médecins Sans Frontières in the UK, joined MSF in 1999, and worked in Sudan and Angola before taking over this post in 2008. Welcome back. Uh, Imran Maiden from the Muslim Aid UK was due to join us today and suddenly, I'm afraid, due to a family emergency, has had to withdraw. So we are sorry he's not here. And I'll redirect his questions, I guess, to some of the others. But we would have welcomed his, his presence. Um, I think that's what I'm supposed to start with. Um, for those who understand it, the event is hashtag... Uh, the, sorry, the event hashtag is hash... Aid access, whatever that means. Sarah. Twitter. Huh? For those who are tweeting. Uh, twi oh, it's for tweeters, okay. Here you are tweeting. <coughs> Is that clear? Cash <laughs> aid access. All right. <laughs> Good. So, let's get down to the. There's the schedule is a panel discussion until 3 o'clock, and then QA, question and answers from 3 till 3.50, and then a wrap up. So shall we start on the Q and uh, on the um, <laughs> the uh, panel discussion? I've got a few uh, suggestions here, which I guess I could try and use. And in my list, Brian, you are first, so maybe we'll do that. Um, on the question of humanitarian access, yeah. as you see it, reaching <coughs> those in need and conflict and semi-conflict areas, is it really getting more difficult? And are the old ways? the traditional ways of, a of getting access really working or not, as, as you see it. And, and that's starting with the easy question. That's the easy one. Thank Just you. Just you wait. Oh, okay. 